Uh, my name is Carrie Kisker. I'm one of the directors of the Center for the Study of Community Colleges, which is an, now I'm beeping. That's not me. Okay, thought it was the microphone. <laughs> Uh, which is a nonprofit research organization based here in Los Angeles, founded by Art Cohen, who, if you haven't met him yet, is here today, and Florence Bauer and John Lombardi back in the 1970s. Um, before I get started on what I'd like to talk to you about today, I want to get a sense of who we have here. How many of you are students currently? Awesome. And how many of you are current community college students? One, awesome. How many are you, uh, former community college students? Fantastic. Uh, how many are studying community colleges in some way? Okay, awesome. And do we have any faculty in the house? Okay, and how many of you, everybody studies community college issues, right? Have you taught at a community college? All right. So I, I ask this because you guys have, I'm going to pick your brains a little bit before we start. So especially for you students who've been at a community college. What are the expected outcomes of attending community college? What do we hope students get out of going to a community college? Just shout it out. Transferring, Transferring. okay, what else? Certificates. What was that? Certificates. certificates, yep, workforce certificates. What else do we hope students get? Job skills, Job skills. that's the big one, okay. Anything else? How do we, what was that? Just, uh, enrichment. Enrichment, okay. Right, so sort of that liberal arts sense of greater holistic knowledge, maybe. Um, how do we measure whether students are getting these skills? Any thoughts? We can look at whether they transferred. We can sometimes look at whether they got a job, right? We just assume if you get the certificate, they've got the skills necessary to earn that. Is there anything left out in this bunch of outcomes that we've talked about in your mind? Are there outcomes that we should be thinking about as far as community college attendance that aren't part of the list we've come up with so far? Is the relationship with the student with the, um, social, the community? Exactly, right. It's a community college, right? So relationship with the community. You've heard me talk before, too. Um, <laughs> anything else? Yeah. Uh-huh, right, exactly, loyalty and maybe future contributions. It's a big part of it. All right, now I just need to learn these buttons. I'll get us started here. Okay, so I do a lot of thinking about the civic and democratic outcomes of community colleges, which are, in my mind, frequently overlooked, especially when you're talking to policymakers about what we expect students to get by attending a community college, right? They're not the job skills, they're not necessarily the transferability skills. They often are, as to Roz's point earlier, some of very closely connected to some of the soft skills that employers want. Okay. So, um, this project, which is called the Higher Education Civic Outcomes Project, um, emerged from a concern of mine and many of my colleagues that civic skills are being overlooked in our current climate of focusing particularly on workforce and very measurable outcomes. Um, and yet, there's been a lot of talk about the importance of these skills. So S Karen McTime Musil, who um, is at the American Association, no, Association of American Colleges and Universities wrote, that civic capacity and social responsibility should be a non-negotiable, sought-after outcome for every student at every college, regardless of the specialty. Okay, so there's a lot of talk about that. Bernie Ronan is a, was a colleague of mine, um, wrote that, community co that these skills may be more important even at community colleges than at other institutions because of the college's historic access mission, right? There's the democratizing societal role that community college plays. And Bernie wrote that community colleges both democratize opportunity, right, through the open access, open door, and do the work of democracy. To him and to me, doing the work of democracy is helping ensure that our students, our community college students, get the skills, capabilities, knowledge, um, self-efficacy they need to participate meaningfully in a democratic society. So um, 
we started looking into, so the first question I asked is what are the outcomes of community college? The second question I asked you was how do we measure that? Um, so we, I thought a lot about the answer to the first question and realized there's this big hole here that not enough people are talking about. And then I got to the second question and realized there's an even bigger hole here. So if we all agree that we should have some civic or democratic outcomes of attending community college, we don't have any way to measure them. There are a couple surveys that had a couple questions about them. The Harry survey out of UCLA had one or two questions. But nothing that was particular to community colleges and nothing that separated out the, what we mean or defined what we mean by civic outcomes. So it could mean anything, civic behaviors, and that's different than a sense of civic agency or capabilities, skills, that sort of thing. Um, we also realized that the, these surveys that were asking a few of these questions were not doing anything con to control for the skills or capabilities that students may have had before they got to college, right? So in the way that you would never try to assess the impact of college on students' academic learning without asking for their grades and SAT scores prior to college, right? You need that as a baseline assessment so you know the value out of college. Yet the existing surveys about civic and democratic skills were doing exactly that. Um, so very frustrated with what was happening out there, uh, an organization called the Democracy Commitment and I partnered about five years ago. Uh, the Democracy Commitment is a consortium of about 250 community colleges across the United States working to expand civic learning and democratic engagement among their students. Uh, and we partnered um, to be able to uh, figure out how we might be able to assess some of the value add of community colleges uh, in terms of student skills and uh, attributes. Um, and since 2014, we've been doing the, an annual assessment on community college campuses about the civic outcomes uh, students are experiencing after a couple of years of attendance. Um, so the purposes of these now six years of um, serving students one is to examine the individual and institutional factors that are associated with higher levels of civic outcomes. Um, we also have looked, although I'm not going to talk about it today, about how these outcomes vary across race and gender. Uh, and more importantly, um, we are starting to try to influence the national dialogue uh, about the civic and democratic purposes of, of higher education and community colleges in particular. Okay. Briefly, we've used a couple conceptual frames for this project over the years. Um, the big one and the one that guides our statistical methods is Aston's IEO model. Raise your hand if you've heard of it. Okay, so basically it's a way, <laughs> thanks everybody, uh, in a master's or higher level program. Um, basically, it's the IEO model stands for input environment outcomes. And it's, a, and it's a statistical framework for controlling the factors that happen first, so the background characteristics that students bring with them to college and then one by one controlling for the experiences they have during college so that you can isolate the effects of each of those on an outcome that you're studying. Okay, so we follow that model. We've also used what's called the conditional college impact model, which basically allows us to look at statistically interaction effects between race and gender and particular behaviors and activities. Um, and taken together, these allow us to look at how the community college environment affects student civic outcomes and how that varies right across race and gender. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about methods, but I'm not talking, I'm not, I'm showing, I'll show you some results in a minute, but this is now five years of surveying students, so um, a couple things have changed. We've developed two instruments and have now been using them. The first is our civic outcome survey. It has about 20 questions related to um, students' civic skills, capabilities, self-efficacy, uh, self agency, behaviors, knowledge, that sort of thing. Um, and that we've been annually, annually administering every year since 2015 nationally. Uh, and we also have put out an institutional questionnaire, which we allow one person on each college campus to fill out, although they probably need help from other people on campus. And it asks everything from, is civic engagement or democratic engagement cited in your college's mission statement? Similar to Roz, what you were talking about with international education. Is it in your marketing materials? Are there um, benefits or incentives for faculty to engage in this kind of work? Is it in their tenure or um, job promotion uh, policies? Right, to how many service learning classes do you have? How many internships in the community do you offer? All of these things to try to get a sense of what colleges are doing to promote uh, civic and democratic engagement. All right, 
So data collection for five years, no. Yeah, five years now, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, although I don't have 14 up here because that was California specific. Uh, we've annually administered at somewhere between nine and 13 colleges. I think it's 18 this year, but I didn't know that for sure yet, so I didn't put it up. Um, the original nine colleges in our pilot study were purposively selected to um, increase, look at geographic diversity, diversity in student body, setting size, that sort of thing. We've now invited other colleges to participate without making sure that we have a super diverse sample. Um, and colleges in the spring term administer the student survey to the greater of either 1,000 students or 10% of their student bodies. The 1,000 students is important because, and I'll get to it in a second, response rates have been about 6-7%. Um, which is not good, but about average for student surveys. Um, and there's been a lot of research done saying that if you survey at least 1,000 students at any one institution, that you can make pretty reliable estimates about um, their outcomes based on that sample, even with low response rates. So we're crossing our fingers and hoping that that's true. Uh, and over the years, we've done a bunch of different analyses. We've done factor analysis to try to lump some of these things together and figure out if, so rather than saying, can you have um, a conversation with somebody who disagrees with you in a civil manner and using that as a dependent variable, we've done a factor analysis which allows us to clump a lot of things together. Uh, and I'm going to get back to some of those factors in a minute. We've also used uh, regression techniques uh, pretty consistently. And to look at the interaction effects, we've done analysis of two- and three-way interactions uh, to look at how it might vary across race and gender. OK, now the fun stuff. I want to define for you our four major factors that we've used as dependent variables in our studies. Um, and these are the outcomes defined, if you will. So civic capacity includes. Uh, and by the way, we designed our study to get at all, or our survey to get at all of these things. And then when we did the um, exploratory factor analysis, we were really happy to see that most of them did fall into the buckets we thought. Some things, like the very last one here, we thought was going to be part of the next factor and instead was part of this one, but that's okay. We'll follow what the numbers tell us. So civic capacity includes its ability-based, ability to have a civic conversation about controversial issues, to have your views challenged by others, to voice your opinions, to uh, understand people or attempt to understand people from different cultures, that sort of thing. Um, the next major dependent variable we've looked at is civic agency, which is a view of yourself as part of a larger campus or community, campus or larger community, as someone who can have an impact on what happens in the country, uh, as someone who has something to offer the world, so you see value in yourself, who can speak up for themselves and others, someone who will work to promote change after leaving college, our third bucket is civic knowledge. And uh, this is our weakest dependent variable so far. In fact, we've even, starting this year, not even asked questions about civic knowledge uh, because we're not getting some of the results we want to see there in terms of significance. But we had been asking students to self-rate their gains in knowledge relating to global, national, and community issues. And we also had a couple of content questions that I don't think we did very well. But they're there for a couple of years of survey data. And then we also have a whole section on civic behaviors. And these, in particular, we ask them to say, how frequently did you do x, y, and z before coming to college? And how frequently are you doing these things now? And that is everything from expressing your opinions on social media to participating in a campaign, raising awareness, trying to convince others to vote for a particular candidate or party or issue, um, signing a petition, raising money, all these things. What is not on the civic behaviors list? Does anyone, anyone notice something that's missing when you think about a civic behavior? Voting. Voting. It's not on here. And that was purposeful. Neither is registering to vote, by the way. And the reason we kept it out, first of all, statistically, those voting um, variables didn't hang together very well with the other civic behaviors. But there's also this theory, which I subscribe to, that voting is a gateway drug for more transformative, more intensive civic engagement, right? So it's easy to vote. Uh, by the way, there's an election on Tuesday. I hope everyone has already <laughs> or will vote. I'm not saying it's not important. It's very important. But it's the, maybe the easiest thing to do 
right? So what we're, our thinking is is that gate, voting can be this gateway drug to more uh, transformative activities such as all of these. And I'm going to come back to that point in a little bit. Anybody have any questions before I go on on, uh, on these major, these are our four dependent variables for the most part, uh, and, and what's included in each one? No. All right. Everyone's still awake? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to just spend a few minutes on, um, I set my clock, but then it turned itself off on the um, individual predictors of civic outcomes. In a way, I don't care about this at all because I want to know what the institutions are doing regardless of who their students are. Um, but there's also, I think it's important to look at this too because it does tell us a little bit about um, maybe who we need to be working with more and in what ways. So um, let's play, since it's almost 4 o'clock or past 4 o'clock and you guys have been here all day, let's do a little guessing game. Um, I'm not throwing up a ton of numbers because nobody wants to look at a ton of numbers. Instead, I'm using a cute little coding chart to show the relative effect sizes of all of these things, uh, all of these independent variables on the dependent variables. So if you see one arrow, it's a small beta, it's a relatively small effect size. Two is going to be more moderate effect size, a larger effect size. And a couple of them have four arrows, which is a pretty significant beta uh, in studies like these. Okay, so let's say being African American, do you think you are going to have greater gains in civic capacity, agency, knowledge, and behavior as compared to white students after a year or two of college, or lesser gains? What do you think? There's more, okay. People are nodding. Why do you say that? Mm -hmm. So if they go to like college and they learn more than like the population they, they interact with, they understand. Okay, that's a great guess. All right, so you're mostly correct. African Americans tend to show greater gains in the first three of these outcomes than white students. The down uh, arrow has to relate to civic behavior, and I have a theory about why this is. Although this doesn't tell me anything about causality, so I don't know if this is anything more than a theory. But my theory is there is a strong tradition of social justice and community activism in black churches especially. And so students who come in with higher levels, maybe African American students come in with higher levels of it because of their religious experiences and background, aren't gaining as much during college because remember with behavior we have the pre-test, post-test situation. So maybe it's not that they're doing less of these behaviors, it just means that the gain between before they came and after they came is is lower. That's my theory. I don't know if that's true or not. What do we think about Latino, Latina students? Same thing? Sure. We'll give it a shot. Got to keep you guys awake somehow. Um, sm slightly smaller effect sizes. Same thing with civic behavior. I don't have a neat little theory for uh, Latino students about this the same way I do with African American students because I've not read any literature saying there's a strong tradition of social activism with Latino communities. It might be that that exists and I don't know about it. If it does, it might explain this result more. But there it is. Okay, parental income. So these two are dichotomous variables, right? You're either African American or you're not. Parental income is on a sliding scale, right? So we can look at the higher your income is and is that related to higher growth in, in civic outcomes or um, have a negative effect? What do you think? Just a guess. There's no right or wrong. Well, there is a right answer, but no one's going to remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me ask you a different way. What would you like to see? If we think about community colleges as evening the playing field among socioeconomic groups, we would like to see a negative relationship between parental income and the gain you get, the value out of college as it relates to these civic outcomes, right? And in fact, that's what we've found consistently over the years. Not so much in civic agency, but in the other ones. So this means the lower your parental income is coming into college, the greater your gains are, right? And the higher your parental income, one might suppose that you might have higher levels of these civic skills to begin with, and so the gain is less. Or it might mean that the value add, the impact of college, is just greater for students from these lower socioeconomic levels. Either way, I don't care. It's really good news for somebody who cares about community colleges from a social justice perspective. OK, now we get into the really interesting stuff. 
So you guys laughed when I asked who was familiar with the IEO model. For those of you who are, you know there's been a lot of work done by the Astons, by Pasquarella and Terenzini, and many other higher ed scholars about the student behaviors in college that lead to higher academic outcomes. So we wanted to see if those same student behaviors also affected students' civic outcomes. So first one, interacting with the professor, we know that really increases your chance of persisting and graduating, that sort of thing. Turns out, it also leads to greater gains in capacity, agency, and civic knowledge, right? So it could be that it's uh, maybe if you just erase civic from the top line there, maybe interacting with a professor is gonna increase your feeling, your, your skills, knowledge, abilities, and sense of agency across the board, and civic agency and skills just also fall into that. Doesn't matter again, it's still the result we'd like to see. Same thing with studying for a class. And, the fa and even if you look at the civic agency, piece of this, so just studying for the class, thanks. Is that right? All right. Um, just studying for class, doesn't have anything to do with political science or anything else, can increase your sense of civic agency, your belief that you can do something to affect change in this world, right? Participating in a racial ethnic organization, regardless of your race, gender, background, whatever, had fairly large uh, associations with greater gains in these civic outcomes. Same thing with acting as a tutor, mentor, or coach, and attending religious services, although that was um, a smaller, and we've unpacked that uh, having to do with race and gender a little bit more, too. Okay, so now we get into some of these things that colleges are doing. I mentioned the democracy commitment is a group of colleges trying to work to encourage these civic behaviors among students, um, and these are some of the things that they're working to do. So has anyone participated in an intergroup dialogue or a deliberative dialogue? They're basically these structured 30, 60, 90 minute conversations around a particular wicked problem, a really tough subject, and you're asked to listen without judging, to share without um, judging, and it's a way for people to sort of see different sides of an issue and try to understand why people who you might disagree with on a policy issue why they believe the way they do. It's a really, really powerful experience. Um, so colleges that put on these dialogues for their students, and in fact, the more frequently they put on these, uh, get students engaged in these dialogues, the more they're able to raise their students' civic outcomes. And in fact, this is the most dramatic effects of all of our independent variables, which is great. I do a lot of work with a group called the Kettering Foundation that's working to promote these deliberative dialogues on campus, and they love this finding because it validates what they've been saying for 30 years, which is this is the best way to transform students' lives and get them to understand people who disagree and not judge them for that, but just have a productive conversation and maybe find a way to work together. So obtaining news regularly also has a transformative effect on students' civic outcomes. And this doesn't have to be something in a poli-sci class where they ask you to bring in yet an article from today's newspaper. This could be from your math class where they ask you once a week to find an article from the newspaper that has something mathematical that you could relate to what you're studying. We've all probably been in courses that do this. This is not hard for faculty to do in any discipline. Okay, registering to vote. This is back to my gateway drug theory here. So registering to vote, turns out, has a moderate effect on students' civic capacity, which sort of makes sense. Okay, you're registered, okay, I can do this, right? It doesn't always transfer to some of these other things. Maybe it's a little too far out. So then we looked at, all right, registering to vote is, meh, maybe that alone is not enough. So we do the get out the vote drives, we try to get students to do all this stuff, turbo vote does a bunch of stuff. If you vote in a state, local, or national election, what happens? Is our gateway drug theory onto something? Eh, maybe, maybe onto something, maybe not, I'm not quite sure. There isn't a greater association with civic agency and with civic behavior. This is the one we're really concerned about, right? But it's not huge, I would love it if it were bigger. What I would really like to do is unpack the voted in the local election versus state or national because we all know that more people, especially young people, vote in the national elections, but the state and local elections are around the issues that really affect our day-to-day -day lives. 
right? And that's where we should be putting our energies. So I would love just to pick those apart in some way in the future and see if, um, if there's any changes there. Okay, this is what's fascinating to me. Do you think voting in a student election would be more impactful in terms of gains in civic outcomes or less than voting in a local or national? More, why? Who said more? Why do you think? Exactly. And it's about issues that are affecting, if we're students, these are what we're living and breathing every day, right? These are the issues that are important to us. But also, then there's no issue of citizenship status or other reasons why people might not vote in other elections. Well, you're on to something. We found pretty moderate effect sizes for all four of these civic outcomes. So the mere act of voting in a student election that might have nothing to do with anything but whether or not to put a vending machine in the student union is increasing our students' civic outcomes. Okay, right, so, this, so maybe this is where the gateway drug thing is actually happening here. If you're voting in a student election, what we haven't looked at yet but we will soon is whether this is influencing this in any way. So maybe the gateway is from here to here to here. I don't know. We'll look at that. Um, any of you who have done uh, um, linear regression, you know the final R square basically tells you uh, the amount of variance you are accounting for in your models. Um, this is really low, which is part of the reason why we've dropped our civic knowledge questions on the survey. These are actually pretty reasonable for a survey like this. And this, because we're doing the pre-test, post-test model, I'll be fine. Um, it's actually a pretty amazing amount of variance to be able to uh, account for. Okay, always limitations with a study like this. I hate our response rates every year, <laughs> um, although we can justify them and do. Um, the relatively small number of institutions, which we hope will be changing in the next couple of years, but it makes it really hard. You notice I didn't talk about any institutional variables <coughs> yet, so like size, geographic location, percent of faculty working full-time, all of that stuff. We have data related to that, but it's not um, as strong as I would like to see it yet because of the small number of institutions. Also, um, the causality here. You notice I did my very best to say these things are associated with gains in student outcomes rather than these things lead to gains in student outcomes. I'm not perfect at that uh, because I believe that they, they do. I just can't prove it yet with the causality. At some point, we're going to dig into that with um, qualitative research and be able to assess causality a little bit more. Um, we, at the end of the day, it, what we've learned is that certain institutional and student behaviors in college have really powerful effects on the development of students' civic outcomes. And that means it's, it's great for research, but it's really important to colleges that are doing this work because it shows that the programs and practices and activities that they are working so hard to put on for their students um, are actually having the intended outcomes. Right, so courses focused on inequality, racial ethnic organizations, deliberative dialogue, student government, student elections, all these things that campuses are doing to, to promote, to cross their fingers and hope that students are more democratically engaged are having that effect. Um, and so then it would also, some of the behavior stuff like, oh, uh, we talked about encouraging students to bring in clippings from the newspaper, which means they have to read the newspaper. There are all kinds of things that institutions can do to encourage or require some of these behaviors um, among their students. So there's a lot of real practical outcomes here. I'm running short on time, so I'm going to just put these up here and say that there's a lot of statistical work still to do here. We are exploring a partnership to really blow up this project and expand it to a whole lot more colleges, which would be fun. Um, to me, the critical piece of this is going to be taking what we've learned and talking to policymakers and college leaders and reiterating both the importance of these results and also the importance of not overlooking, not having tunnel vision focused on workforce outcomes and remembering that community colleges were set up with a civic purpose and that higher education indeed performs a civic and democratic function that is integral to preparing students who can participate meaningfully in our society. So the messaging of this is, is really the next big step for, for us. And I think that does it for me. Thanks, guys.